the news of the day. Uh, why don't I not? Why do I not have the story open? I don't have the story open. Elon Musk Twitter people. Elon Musk buys nine percent. Do I want to? Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, who do we do here? Uh, let's go here. All garbage. All garbage. News you can trust? No, thank you. Elon Musk snaps up three billion dollars in Twitter. It's amazing. Common shares, common uh, open market voting shares. Let's just read this, and then we're going to just you know discuss what this means and what it doesn't mean and why it's interesting. Elon Musk has taken a 9.2% stake in Twitter, according to a U.S. securities filing. The news sent to Twitter sent the shares soaring 25% in pre-market trading. Darn it. Darn it. And it doesn't matter. I don't care. Everything I buy, I, 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 wouldn't, I couldn't buy Twitter regardless because I don't believe in the company. I bought GoPro, and I think I'm still down on GoPro, but it's still in business, which is good. The Tesla founder bought $73 million and change on March 14, according to Securities and Exchange Commission, $2.8. $2.9 billion. The stake makes him the largest shareholder in the company and is more than four times the 2.25% holding of Dorsey, which means that between the two of them, well, they're over 10%, but that's not, uh, it's relevant for voting. We'll get into what it, what it kind of means. And, you know, it goes, oh, here we go, here we go. This was, it goes back to his tweets. Is a new platform needed? He tweeted this out, you know, it seems there's a problem with um, Twitter. What do we do? Cernovich, Tim Pool said, buy it. I think they meant tongue in cheek or take it over. He bought a 10% um, shareholding in it. So it's it, it's interesting, but what does it mean and what does it not mean? There are um, does it, it, a little, just corporate 101. Uh, at least my understanding of Canadian law, I think it's similar in the United States. The 10 per, There's a reason why he didn't buy 10% or more. And that's because I, I believe it changes his status within the company to an insider, if I'm not mistaken, but holding more than 10% of a publicly traded company uh, subjects you to different rules and regulations. Hold on. Here, SEC. Uh, officers, directors, and shareholders. I think this is it. Beneficial. If your company has registered a class of its equity securities under the Exchange Act, shareholders who acquire more than 5% of the outstanding shares of that class must file beneficial ownership. Okay, that's a filing. And then section 16... Okay, da, da, da. who own more than 10%, they must register as insiders. So I think that's that, that, that subjects them to certain regulations that, you know, there may be no vest. How do I get out of here? Oh, gosh, darn it. Hold on. Close this. There's, there's probably a good reason why Elon doesn't want to be a 10% or more shareholder in the company. We seem to be still be on the old, on the old thing there. Um, and then, you know, just like, what, what does it mean? What does it not mean? Under 10%, not subject to certain regulations, subject to certain filings, which is why people now know about him buying over 5%, I presume. But like, for anybody who doesn't know, like if you own shares in a publicly traded company, every now and again, you get these notices in the mail, shareholder meetings where you can go and make certain, make your voice heard as a shareholder in the company. Um, you know, But typically when you own, I don't know, a few shares of an outstanding float, which is the amount of shares that are issued to the public, your voice, uh, you know, m most people don't even go to these shareholder meetings because you have, you know, it's, it's fun for the experience, but you won't have an impact, although you get to make your voice heard. Elon is the world's richest troll and man. The whole thing is about the return of Trump. 93 million followers is 93 million interactions in stock market jargon. Let history record this super chat. And I will tweet it at Elon Musk after we're done here. No, but there is, there is, look, uh, uh, there, there's a little bit more to it. I think under 10%, he's not a controlling shareholder. There could have been other ways of acquiring an interest in the company that might have given him more of, um, more of a voice. But just for the corporate side of this, oh, shoot, I thought I just stopped the stream. I, I'm an idiot. I did. Jeez, Louise, Viva. Share. Share screen. Do not take yourself out of the stream. What does a shareholder do? This is not legal advice, people. It's just the 101, so you can appreciate it. Let me make sure we're looking at the same thing here. We are. Minimize. Go back here. 
A shareholder, also known as this is from upcounsel.com. It's bottle, it's it's this is like basic one-on-one level stuff. A shareholder, also known as a stockholder, participates in the management of a company. A shareholder is an individual institution or company that owns a share. So yeah, preferred preferred dividends, securities, common stock. Uh, Elon bought common stock. What does a shareholder do? They, they participate in the management of the company. Uh, and, oh, look, bottom line, they vote in the management. They vote in the management. They approve the financials at the end of the year. Uh, they have some oversight in the company. They have their say into certain managerial aspects of the company. But when you don't have a controlling interest in the company, you don't get to control who is appointed to the board of directors. You don't get to appoint the officers of the company. You get to vote, but you don't get the controlling vote. If there's no controlling vote, you know, it's sort of democratized. If there's majority controlling, uh, if there's majority shareholders who among all of their minority shareholdings control the vote, that's how you control it. If you want to maintain control over your publicly traded company or your own company, you retain whatever is the controlling interest in whatever jurisdiction you live in so that everybody else gets to vote on certain issues that are subject to the vote of common shareholders, but you don't get your vote trumped by the majority. So he gets to now have a say. And at just under 10%, he doesn't have a majority say. He doesn't have a controlling say, but he's got a very big say. Um, and then even more interesting than that, though, every people, some people appreciate this, other people don't until you get screwed by you know, a mining company, for example, that however minor, however small your shareholding is, minority shareholders, and Elon Musk is a big minority shareholder, you have rights. And you have rights to ensure that the company does not act in a way that, as we say in the industry, oppresses your minority shareholding rights. So let's just say, for example, Robert Barnes and I have discussed this with Rumble. They're going public. If a company goes public on certain warranties and representations, if a, if a company makes certain public warranty of public representations that induces people to invest, those people are never going to, you're never going to be a, a majority shareholder in Rumble. You're never going to be a majority shareholder in, I don't know, Twitter. But if Twitter makes public statements that induce people to become shareholders and minority shareholders, and then they go ahead and violate those warranties and representations, in a manner that affects the price of the stock. And it might only affect common stock. If they do that, and it impacts the minority shareholder interest by devaluing their stocks, by you know, violating the warranties and representation that induced the shareholders to acquire the stocks in the first place, you have rights and remedies. Elon Musk, even though he only has a minority shareholder stake, a big one, uh, he's now a minority shareholder in Twitter. And if Twitter behaves itself in a manner that goes against its bylaws, that violates its public statements, that, that goes against the interests of the minority shareholders, well, Elon Musk has certain right and re rights and recourses as a minority shareholder in this company to take legal action. Twitter is now not beholden to Elon any more than anybody else, but now has to answer to potential shareholder oppression that minority shareholders may argue they are victims of if Twitter does certain things that compromise its share price, one of which might have been booting one of its most popular Twitter people. You imagine, I don't think it's good for the stock. I don't think it's good for the company, despite all of the, you know, won't someone think of the children, to boot Donald Trump from the platform. And if the decision to do that affects shareholder price. Well, people who believe that they have been oppressed by that decision have had their shareholder rights violated. They have rights and recourses. Most people don't have billions of dollars to initiate oppression remedies. Elon Musk does. So it's a, it's a big, big babysitter that has just bought his way into the company. Tweet that granny fro to the world, Viva. I will do it. So it's very interesting. Oh, only 4,000 watching and 1,500 likes. Let me see who's watching on the Rumbles. Um, I've gotten tweet. Oh, live at 1.30, Ontario time, room 14V, line 14 on docket. What number do I call, question mark? People, this might turn into another, um, 
I need to get an earbud for my phone because I can't do it without an earbud. We'll see if I can get in on the Pat King hearing. I'm just going to listen to it and live mouth tweet what's going on. Oh yeah, tweet uh, thumbs up, uh, thumbs up in comment. You, you know what to do. Share away. But let me go see the Rumble, the Rumble. We're on Rumble. Nearly two thousand watching on Rumble. Very, very nice. And uh, no Rumble rants, but let's just get some of the chat. Um, we love you. Let's go. The weeds. Back to normal trading the way it was because no more unipolar world. Okay. It's literally us versus them. Chili boo revolution. Viva looking at the rumbles from Clive. And now someone someone put that in there. I don't know what exactly that says. Dude, it looks like bucket list or Bo Mickey. Buddhist Mickey. I don't know. If you're watching on YouTube, you're suspect. You're suspect. The weeds. Okay. So let me see if I actually can't get people are working. <laughs> I yes. Who, who would have thought that this would have actually become, I call it work. I love it. When you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. My only stresses in the world is I want to be value added and not, and not repetitive. <laughs> 